Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the care and propagation of the beautiful Chattiscantia Silla Montana. This plant hails from North Mexico in very, very dry and arid areas. I would say that it's probably desert-like conditions because this plant has this really, really beautiful thick white hair that actually shields it from direct sunlight and also protects it from moisture loss. And this is going to tell us that this plant likes to be in very, very good direct sunlight. If you grow this plant in lower light situation, it's going to have smaller leaves, longer internodes, it's going to try to reach for the sun. So my pointer would just to give it as many direct sunlight as you can without giving it like too open view of the sky where it's just full uh, blasting sun. Although if you have successfully grown them in that condition, feel free to comment down below. I have a feeling that they can do that considering the fact that they did adapt to live in those climates. And for watering, treat this like a succulent. This is Atratoscantia, but it is also a very, very succulent plant. You can tell from the very thick leaves, from the very thick stem, and then also from the fact that it's got all these white fuzz that's preventing water loss uh, through transpiration from the leaves. So I give this guy either cacti succulent potting mix or if I give them my aerid potting mix, like in this case, they will also do well. So this is in terracotta, aerid potting mix, it dries out really, really, really fast. And they just don't want to be sitting in water at all. So keep in mind that uh, for this plant, you do have to give it a pretty long drying out period. Um, I don't really have a lot of pest pressures on these guys. Thankfully, even though I would have a feeling this would be a very pest prone plant. Thankfully, I've had none yet so far. I've got quite a few of these that are propagated from one plant. And fertilizing, same way I do with my other house plants. I do natural and chemical means of fertilizing. I dilute everything and I do it pretty frequently. Oh, and it's worth mentioning that they do have some beautiful flowers. I'm going to insert some photos on the screen so you'll know what they look like. They flower quite often, I would say, every two to three months. And these guys actually they would grow upwards, they would shoot up, and then it would get super heavy, just as most Tradescantias, and it would just start flopping down. If you want to keep them a little bit more upright, just keep pruning them back. It will just get bushier and bushier, and it will just keep reaching up until eventually it will reach down like this. Uh, it actually looks really nice hanging as well, so it's a beautiful hanging basket plant. Okay, so I've prepared three different potting mix here, and they can live in all of them, just so you know. This is my cacti succulent potting mix, aeroid potting mix, and this is my general purpose potting mix. And these three are different in terms of watering. So for this one, you want to water it a little bit, you want to water this less, and this one even less. So if you are someone who don't want to water your plants every day or every other day, this may be a better choice for you. You may want to water it every, I don't know, five to seven days, depending on your conditions. So yeah, I'm going to propagate them in all of these uh, setups to show what they look like. And for the top cutting, you can just take it anywhere like that and then stick it in. It's very easy. And I'm not going to water any of these today because when you make a cut, there's going to be a little bit of wound here. Normally you would let it callous, uh, sit somewhere and let it dry up for a bit. I don't, I just put it straight into my uh, media, but then I don't water it right away yet. So I do let it kind of dry out first and I'll water this uh, either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So you actually only need one node. This is the same way that you propagate your uh, Tradescantia Nanook, which I also have a video of. And if you have a top cutting like this with two leaves, feel free to cut, uh, take one of the lower leaves off. This is because you don't want too many leaves on the cutting as the leaves will drain energy from the cutting. What this cutting needs to do next is to put out roots somewhere along the node and it's going to push out new growth from above because this is a top cutting. But let me show you what happens when you have a uh, mid middle cutting. All right, so this is a middle cutting and the anatomy is this, like when you stick this in soil, it's gonna root in the bottom and then a new growth will appear somewhere along this line here, this node here. So there's going to be a whole new branch. And this leaf, what it's doing right now, is just providing some energy. It's going to photosynthesize to make sure that this root appears and also the new nodes come out with a new vine. If you don't have the leaf, technically speaking, you can. You can lay it on top of soil and it should still root. Uh, but the chances are quite low on that. So this is the highest chance that you get. So what I do is I just stick this right into my potting mix like that. 
there nice and smooth and i think i forgot to mention in the care portion but these guys they don't like to get their leaves wet you can tell uh i actually missed this uh, a little bit ago because i was doing a misting video so i was misting everything um, as an example but yeah they don't like to get their leaves wet where possible just use a squeeze bottle and uh, wet the, the, around the soil here because it's targeted quite well or you can also bottom water these i think they would really appreciate it so yeah i'm gonna continue doing this and then i guess i will see you when i'm done i've got quite a few pots here going <laughs> there so yeah so i think a lot of you guys are wondering if i can actually do water propagation with these uh, the short answer is no uh, because of their thick fuzzy stem uh, they actually rot really easily i've tried that in water and yeah it doesn't really work out and i actually have another one of these that i'm actually going to cut up this is actually a much younger plant but i think it's starting to trail and i think i am going to cut it up look at all these babies that are growing from below the potting mix and then before that i'm going to show you quickly this is the parent plant and this is what their roots look like you can see that they actually have very very fine roots which actually kind of means that they don't really want to dry out too much usually but yeah you do want to let this dry out i guess it's time to give this a little bit of a bigger pot situation i am actually going to try something new this time you see this uh, bare vine here actually what i would do with the parent plant here is i would normally cut it down because if i don't the new leaves will appear from the top of the potting uh, of the stem here sorry not leaves the new vine so it's gonna have this leggy thing with like new vines coming up from the top not a sexy look so if you cut it the vines are gonna appear somewhere from below and in fact it's gonna give me two to three vines from down below so always prune your plants that way and for this one i am actually going to cut it up uh without the leaves oh my God. okay so i'm just gonna cut it like that without the leaves just stick it on the soil all right you see this little bump right at the edge of my thumb that's actually a growing eye that's where a new vine will appear from all right so i'm done so i've got four pots in cacti succulent potting mix four pots in aeroid eight pots in general with two of these as wet stick propagations i decided to put them just lay lay them flat on top there's a mosquito trying to <laughs> there's a mosquito that's been biting me and it keeps running away anyway so yeah with the growing eye facing up as you can see here so let's see how those fare i have a feeling they'll actually do quite well actually so two parent plant here i give this one a bigger pot and i trim this way down so this is going to become bushy hopefully if i don't kill it so i guess i'll see you guys in a few months time here's a seven weeks update and this is the one that's grown in cacti succulent potting mix and i must say that this one is growing the fastest because it's got like this corner window here that's getting more light than the ones that are grown down below which we will see soon but here let me troubleshoot this uh, this is probably over watering so I do water this lightly every day so basically what I did was every day I would just uh, use my squeeze bottle and squeeze some water right into the potting mix sometimes it would get on the leaves I know I know to say never to get the leaves wet because you'll get these problems on the leaves if you get it wet but I, got, I have like 3,000 pots of plants, so I don't really have time to bottom water everybody. But yeah, these guys are growing well though, as you can see here. Um, I'm not really that worried about this because uh, if I can always cut it up and propagate it and grow it better when I'm trying to sell these. This is mainly for educational purposes only. But yeah, uh, to grow them correctly, you do need a really good watering regime. You need to really back off with watering. And I am an overwaterer, so I must water my plants every day. That's just something that I have to live with now moving on down below actually this is the wet sticks without the leaves something grew out of it a little leaf but then I lost it so I guess you can technically grow them out of wet sticks but I don't know why it didn't survive maybe I forgot watering or something and this was grown in an aerate potting mix I don't know what happened to this pot I may have over or underwatered it but something's growing out of it now <laughs> get that and these guys are grown in my general purpose potting mix. I do water this a lot less, maybe every other day because I know they retain a lot more water. But somehow I managed to still overwater it. Look at the yellowing at the edge of the leaves and this right here, this um, rot at the edge of the leaves and this yellowing here, that's overwatering. So 
Uh, these guys are living under shelf. Look at that. This is the light that it's getting. So it's leggier compared to the ones up above. They really want to be in good direct sunlight. Just so you know, the leaves are gonna get small and leggy for these guys. But look at those baby leaves. So cute. Um, but some more down here. These are the ones grown in aerate potting mix as well. This is trying to reach for the sky. Very, very cute. Look at all these baby leaves. Hello, everyone. But yeah, this is to show you that they can grow in different uh, potting mix conditions, but then you do want to water them differently. I do water this every day, the one pot, uh, aerate potting mix. And this one seems to be not as overwatered because look at how porous. This is actually very light right now, and I know that I do water it every day, and it's just the water goes right through it. So, yeah, when you don't overwater it, they look like this. They look really nice. And then, here are the parent plants. This is the uh, smaller pot here. <laughs> Look at all these tiny little leaves that came out of it. I'm surprised that it didn't branch out. It normally should branch out a little bit. But this is the other parent plant where we took more, more of the cutting. And look at how dry the soil is. I do water this every day, but because there's so many mature plants in there, and I bet you the roots in there are over the top. There's probably crazy roots in there. So any amount of water I give it will be will be drank up very quickly. It's also a little bit etiolated because it's under a shelf. A lot of these plants that like highlight, they don't like to be on shelves. So they're reaching for the sky. Look at the internodes are very long and the leaves are small. So this is not a particularly beautiful plant unless you like this look some people do like this look but they can get stumpier uh, leaves like big fat leaves and short internal that's the the way that we should grow them i guess according to me at least uh, so yeah i'm sorry i didn't show you that maybe one day i will show you on instagram what they look like when they're grown in almost full sun in desert like conditions but it is the rainy season now you guys i can't leave my plants out in the open air without it getting over water. It rains two to three times a day. So yeah, but this is doing well. Again, water this every day, for every potting mix, and there's a lot of plant living in here. If you only have one plant in here, you don't want to water it as often. I hope this is a good lesson for you guys in terms of not just the propagation of these guys, but also the different potting mix and how some plants can actually live in different types of potting mix and how to water them. All right, so it's actually seven weeks later and I decided to give you guys one more update because I brought everyone here. And this is the parent plant. It is so freaking leggy up here. They're putting out vines here, but yeah, it's not getting top light, which is probably why it was under a shelf. The top growth here is really nice. And this one vine here, I wanted to show you, they have become pink somehow. I don't know why they become pink, but this particular one is so beautiful. Hello. So I did read online that the more light you give it and the less water you have, the more silver and compact it will be. So that's actually a very good tip. So yeah, I don't know why some of these are turning pink, but it is quite beautiful how they turn pink. And some of them actually did flower at some point. I can't remember which ones, maybe the parent plant. And the flowers came off. And I also wanted to show you what an overwatered plant looked like. So this is overwater so it's rotting from the root but the top is actually viable for cutting so you can take single look at that it's even put out its own air real roots so what i'm going to do here in this table i'm going to actually set it up for retail oh hang on one second remember that i showed you some of these these were grown near the window with the yellowing tips well the new leaves are looking fine now i guess because they have so many leaves now that the roots are um, what do you call it, taking in the water that I gave it. So it's not overwatered anymore because it is a more robust plant. And the one in the top shelf is much more dense and much more bushier, or at least it's grown faster than the ones that were grown in the mid shelf here. These are all grown in the mid shelf. So give it more light for sure if you want these to thrive. All right, I'm gonna quickly uh, tidy this up. I'm gonna propagate more. I'm gonna make this pot even fuller. And then these are gonna be up for sale. And I guess I'm gonna quickly show you then what I uh, after I have done that it's gonna take me about an hour or so All right, so I'm done So what I did was I actually chopped them up again and then stuck the cutting right back into the potting mix They seem to do well in the general and the cacti succulent potting mix, but not really the aerate and Imagine how bushy this is going to be. This is about 12 to 15 cuttings per pot Tradescontias are not low maintenance plants as in you will always have to keep propagating them to have them look beautiful and nice and lush. Uh, so this is definitely not a plant for beginners, but it is very, very rewarding. 
And yeah, this is, I guess, going to be for retail in about a month or a little bit over a month. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'm at Botanist on Instagram. If you want to DM me on any questions regarding plant care and propagations, I'll try my best to get back to you. Meanwhile, do take care and stay safe. I will see you in the next video. Bye.